Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Kong again, with another totally normal episode of Should You Summon. Regular Kong spent the weekend screaming on roller coasters, so his voice doesn't work right now. I'm filling in to present the usual high-level overviews to help you decide whether this banner is worth your hard-earned vouchers and crystals. Let's jump right into this Raid Up banner featuring Rosenschal and the Transcender, running from March 31st to April 13th. As a Raid Up banner, you have a 40% chance to get each on-banner character, with the remaining 20% reserved for any other hero in the regular summoning pool. Let's get started with Rosenchal. Rosenchal is an anti-debuff, anti-AOE healer. When she uses a skill on an ally, she clears a debuff and gives stacks of a barrier that cancel incoming debuffs. Whenever an ally ends their turn within range of Rosenchal, they also get some healing and an additional stack. Her three cost skill heals allies within range and gives them a couple turns of post-battle healing. It also turns Rosenchal into an immobile healing crystal. When she's in this state, she can't move or attack or use skills, but she gets improved healing, increased range for her talent, and can revive. She's a member of Mythical Realm, buffed by Geyser Off and the Sage of the Trees, Princess Alliance, buffed by Luna, Shelfanyel and Christiane, and Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, Lance, and herself. Her buff increases damage dealt when you're actively attacking by 12% and causes anyone who attacks you to lose a buff before combat. I'm told this is especially hilarious when it happens to Epsilon's faction buff. She unlocks both the attack and defensive bonds for Clotier and also unlocks her attack bond. For her defensive bond, she needs Lanford. In PvE, she's on faction for Levire and Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple, and Fenrir, Slepanir, and Nidhogg in Ancient Beckoning. She's a staple in the top scoring teams for the latter two. In PvP, mass debuffs are always dangerous and Rosenchal is still a common early ban. Being able to ignore debuffs like Elwyn's heal block or Sherry's stun means there's always a place for Rosenchal in the team, even if there are better single target healers. Next up is a name I sometimes hear Kong mumbling in his sleep, the Transcender. He's basically a magical DPS with a variety of single target and AoE attacks. He builds up his stats as he uses skills. If he's healthy, he can regularly attack twice, like what Leiden does on counterattacks. His three cost skill makes it so he doesn't suffer melee damage penalties and gives him a shield like Kruger's if he drops below 50 HP. The active component swaps his HP percentage with an enemy and then lets him act again. He has a handful of AoE skills as well, including one that pulls enemies towards you. His unique equipment, coming to global servers with the Valkyrie Chronicle crossover in May, is a hat that increases his damage dealt, makes it easier for him to gain talent stacks, and lets him steal buffs when he uses his 3C. I hope that all made sense to you, because I don't know what talent stacks, buffs, 3Cs, or hats are. He's a member of Mythical Realm, buffed by Geyseroff and Sage of the Trees, Dark Reincarnation, buffed by Bozel and Licorice, and Yellis Legends, buffed by Landius and Sigma. He unlocks the attack bond for Alpha, he needs Epsilon for his own defensive bond and the old original Geyseroff for his attack bond. In PvE, he's on factor for Levire and Phoenix in the Eternal Temple, and Fen Fenir and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning. Kong uses him to log scores in the top 10 on the server for both Ancient Beckoning fights, but that's just a Kong thing. There are many better options. PvP is where the inconsistency of his kit hurts him. Unlike someone like Lucradia, who has a bit of everything and lets her pivot and it lets her pivot effectively to different play styles, 
the Transcenders variety seems unfocused. He has a couple of AoE options, but there are other, better AoE mages, and his talent and 3C are based on single target normal attacks, and there are other, better single target mages. His displacement is awkward, he doesn't have great follow up, and there are other, better units with push and pull skills. Anyway, let's move on to the notes for noobs. Rosenchell is good in PvE. She's a top tier in PvP and two Ancient Beckoning fights. Summon her. The Transcender abs almost measure up to Kong's, but that's not enough to make him worth summoning. His upcoming unique equipment is an improvement, but it doesn't completely salvage him. He's skippable. Finally, my usual reminder about upcoming banners. There's not really another must-summon ba banner until the new Florentia and the new Verash in a few weeks. Next week, we should get a Destiny banner featuring Licorice, Mario, and Tsumbe, as well as the introduction of some new equipment. The week after that is a double Destiny week featuring Clotier, Lanford, and Rainforce, and the old classic Landius, Juggler, and Yulia banner. And with that, I'll bid you a fond farewell. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next year's April Fool's edition of Should You Summon. Extra special thanks, of course, to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting this channel directly. Liveit, Derek Gunderson, K8 Soon, and Jared Portella. Eden Seal, Jerome Meyer, and Shara Ilumrius. Kong's always talking about how much he appreciates you all, so thank you.